If you've ever played any video game before, you've probably noticed this and this. While this phenomena looks like it might be a texture glitch, the reality of what's happening is much more interesting than that. But to understand what's happening, I want you to understand a concept called UV mapping. Now, in video games, it would be nice to add as much detail as possible with your models, but game designers can't add a million polygon rocks into their scene, so instead, artists will take a lower resolution version of their model and place the higher resolution details as a texture on top of the low resolution model. However, if you were to try and just drop the texture for your rock directly onto the 3D model, the chances are good that you wouldn't see very desirable results, since your 3D mesh has no context of where to place your 2D texture in its 3D space. This is where UV mapping comes in handy. In this process, you take your three-dimensional mesh and unwrap it to a two-dimensional image. Depending on your 3D application, each face or polygon in your 3D model is tied to a face on the UV map. Now, here's where the problem arises. To prepare your model for UV unwrapping, you need to mark seams. These seams tell your software where it's allowed to cut the mesh in order to flatten it out into 2D space. For example, if we wanted to map a simple texture onto this cube mesh, we need to cut this mesh in a way so that it lays perfectly flat in a 2D space. Think of how you would need to cut a cardboard box in order to get it to lay flat on the ground, using the least amount of cuts. Now, this may look passable on simple geometric shapes like a cube, but things get more complicated when we try to unwrap more organic shapes, like a rock for example, where we don't really have any great spots to put these seams due to its irregular shape, which explains the texture glitches that we see in these original examples. These lines are just where the artist has placed the seam in the mesh, and the texture is now wrapping around itself. Seams are unavoidable when UV unwrapping, but artists have a few tricks up their sleeves to hide these seams. One of the most common ways to hide seams is to place your cuts in less visible spots on your model, like on the hard edges of your model, like our cube example. You can also hide seams in spots like the underside of the mesh, or even in natural cracks in your geometry in rarer cases. In a lot of scenarios, making a really obvious seam can be unavoidable. If you have to mark a seam in a very obvious spot like a rounded rock, a very common technique to hide the seam is to literally hide the seam behind other objects in your level, like using other rocks, grass, or bushes. You can also use the paint tool inside your 3D application to paint directly over the seam in the texture. Although if you have a lot of rocks, for example, to texture, this is gonna take a very long time. Interestingly enough, UV mapping is also the reason you occasionally stumble across textures that look too stretched or even squashed. That's because even if you have great seams, you also need to make sure that your UVs are scaled properly. With more organic shapes, lots of the triangles that you end up with in your mesh may be different sizes, which ends up warping our texture after UV mapping is applied. To avoid this, we can use a checkerboard texture on our mesh to make sure everything is balanced, and then once everything looks good, we can then apply the final texture. So yeah, UVs are pretty cool.